Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to have a look at the Quantum Break the game that's just been released for PC. Uh, bear in mind, this review is a li little bit late, so I do apologise on that. But nonetheless, let's get straight into it. So, I'm going to be um, doing a few things in this review just to have a quick look at the gameplay, really. The performance, which is still my testing tools, is a little bit limited to due to the fact it's still a Windows Store game. And we're just going to have a look at um, basically some good and bad points about it. So the system that I'm going to be doing the testing on is, my, is basically my PC and you should be able to see the specification on the screen right now which is housing an i7-5930K overclocked at 4.5GHz using an X99 MSI motherboard, 16GB of RAM, one EVGA Titan X hybrid. I do have two however SLI still not enabled yet or been supported in the Windows 10 store games uh, using a Corsair AX860 iPower supply, a 2K monitor, the Asus PG278Q uh, ROG Swift 1440p monitor, which is, I believe, still one of the most popular ones out there, and of course, Windows 10 Pro version 1151. Now, I know my PC can run it, uh, the game at, two, at 4K, however, I don't have a 4K monitor to be able to test that, so I can't really uh, give you any ideas of what that's like, but running at 2K, it doesn't have any problems at all. There was only one slight little hiccup, which I'll go on to in a moment. But um, here are the minimum and ideal specs for Quantum Break. Um, for anyone else out there who, has, who will have different specs to what I have, so you see the minimum specs are not not massively demanding, but you will have the settings turned right down to the bottom. The ideal specs that is basically if you want to play it on say 2K or 4K, certainly 4K. So you can see it's quite high specs there, so it'd be quite a lot of money being put into your rig there. And of course, do ensure that Windows 10 is up to date on version 11.51. You can get that from Windows Update. Um, I do, you do remember me, uh, if, you see my, if you saw my Gears of War review for the PC, I did mention that before, where you have a lot of download problems as such, because it won't actually download it until your, until your Windows 10 is updated to that version. So performance wise of Quantum Break wasn't actually too bad, but that wasn't until I realised the problem I was having which was causing the game to run at anywhere between 1 and 2 FPS. It was running so bad it was just irritating, especially on the day of release. Um, but I found out the problem, it was just because G-Sync was enabled. So do if you're having a, a similar issue, just make sure that G-Sync or FreeSync is not enabled because at the moment it's still not supported within Windows 10 Store games. I have been, or I found an, um, a source that actually does say then uh, there is an update coming out around May time, so that's May 2016, and that will be resolving these issues and also be allowing you to disable VSync if you wish. So the actual performance of the game wasn't actually that bad. Um, that wasn't until I actually resolved the, uh, the issue that I was having where it's running between 1, one and 2 FPS and that was constant, um, which was highly annoying. But anyway, nonetheless, that has been resolved, and I've got some statistics here for you here. As you can see, my CPU usage when I was playing the game was anywhere between 25 to 35%. That's actually pretty good. Occasionally, it did spike to about 60, but again, there's nothing to worry about. Um, your CPU usage will vary. Uh, the GPU usage for my Titan X was running at above 95% and above. Um, I never saw it drop below 95% once, and to be honest, it's running majority of the time at about 97 to 98, so that is really, really good. Optimized extremely well just for the one card. The memory usage was quite high, especially for 1080p. Uh, 1080p memory usage was up to 6 gigabytes. Uh, it only occasionally hit that level, but it was pretty much always over 5. Uh, for 2K, it, it wasn't excessively larger, but it was still it was still uh, over 6. But I didn't actually see it getting near the 7 mark. But I would probably expect occasionally at some parts of the game it will probably jump to those marks. 4K, if it goes up in the same sort of pattern, I would expect it to be over 7, probably touching about 8 gigabytes. And of course, as we do know, SLI Crossfire is still not supported within this game. I do hope they do, because at the minute, for one graphic card, it's been utilised extremely well. So hopefully in the future, when they do enable this support, the GPU usage is going to be uh, at that level for two cards, which means you're going to get some massive performance. So as I mentioned at the intro of the video, the performance tools that I have to basically test the game are quite limited due to the fact that the game is running on the Windows 10 store. So I was only able to basically use, should we say, a graph outside of Windows on, an, on another monitor just to basically see exactly what's going on. But I can't track the FPS, so I can't give you an accurate idea of what that is. Only really an estimation. And from the way that I've been playing the game and how I've managed to get it going, I reckon I, I am getting at about 60 FPS. It's certainly not going to be any higher than that due to the fact that VSync is on. So it should lock it around 60 FPS and occasionally you'll get a few drops. Uh, which you do notice there are micro stutters on that. So if you are having huge performance problems, uh, go into the graphics settings and just lock it to F uh, 30 FPS, and that will give you at least a decent smooth gameplay. When I did have G-Sync enabled and it was running anywhere between 1 and 2 FPS, I did lock it at 30 FPS and it did start to play get the game okay. But 
However, I didn't really want to play it at 30 FPS because I know my game, uh, my computer is capable of doing 60, so that's why I had to try and find a way to get around it. But with all that being said, though, I say performance overall isn't too bad. It is, it is still quite good. It is playable. I would, ex I was expecting a little bit more though. But anyway, moving on. So with the performance actually being, should we say, over acceptable, but not but not absolutely amazing. The actual graphics themselves, I, I do have to admit I was not impressed with uh, the PC port for this. The graphics, I do believe, were absolutely terrible uh, in regards to a 2K. When I put the game down to 1080p, it looked absolutely awful. The textures were just blurry. It doesn't seem sharp at all. When you compare it to the likes of, say, even the Gears of War Windows 10 store game, at least the, at least the sharpness and the detail that was, was really good. In this case here, it's absolutely really poor. When I put it up to 2K, it did start to look okay, but I do I was expecting a lot more, especially from a game that's been delayed for such a long time. So that is quite a bit of a disappointment. It does it does seem more like a 1080p is a bit of an upscaled 720p game. So again, very disappointing in that. I do hope um, if they do bring out another one, which I think would be quite good, because uh, the gameplay itself is great. But we'll get to that in a second. Then um, it would be really really good. But in general, the actual graphics of the game they are still they're still good when you compare them to other games, but for the for the expectation of what it should have been at, nah, it's definitely not as good as it should be. But on a plus side for the graphics, I really did think the time effects in it were extremely good throughout the game. I thought that was very creative, the way the, the effects were being used and the style of them. I can't say I've, I've seen effects being used that uh, that way or to all. In that way, to do to do time effects as such, uh, time shift. I do remember that game. Bearing in mind that game was really really old, but the time effects in there were okay. They're certainly nowhere near as good as this, of what this is now. This is the new style, and um, I, I, like I say, with the effects being in play, especially when you're using your powers yourself as well, and all the sound effects from as well. I thought that was absolutely fantastic. Uh, I do think my favourite power is still the time blast. I'm trying to remember what it was called then. The time blast where you can do a good explosion. That's just a fantastic power, and the sound effect of it absolutely great. Uh, now moving on then to the gameplay and the actual story of the game. I won't go too much on about the story, so I don't want to spoil it for anybody if you haven't actually played it yet. But the story itself is pretty good. It's quite interactive and you do feel a little bit immersive at times. There are, you do occasionally get to have to make some choices which do have an effect towards the style of the game that you end up playing. But I won't go on too much about that because um, I don't want to sp uh, do any spoilers for you. And what I did like about it as well is when they put live episodes, or, well, they called them live e episodes, basically think of it as a, like a TV episode basically put in the middle of each each different act within the game. So it actually gets you more immersive in, into the game and you can sort of see how the stories are unfolding. I won't go too much onto the story, but it was a very good story and I do hope they can make a second one. Gameplay itself for the game I thought was really great. The... Uh, I thought it had a good combination of basic cover systems in there. The weapons as well were very nice to use. It's a simple game to play. It's not hard to learn. There's always tutorials there telling you what to do if you're not really too sure how to play it or you keep forgetting. The use of the time powers and all the powers you basically have at your disposal as well. I think there's plenty of choice there. I know they some people just say there could have been some more powers, but personally I think there's enough powers there to keep you going. And uh, the game is also very responsive as well during gameplay, which is you, you don't want the game to be unresponsive. The only issue I ever did have with the gameplay itself was just the cover system. Uh, sometimes it did feel a little unresponsive when you're in the cover, or just in general when you're actually trying to get in and out of cover. That was a little bit annoying. So if they was to make a second one, I think really that's the only thing they really need to work on, and potentially add in some more weapons and some more powers. But for me, though, the weapons, the powers, and how the simple and how simple the game was being played, I thought was absolutely fantastic. So, great game, all, great gameplay there, all in all. The multiplayer-wise, I don't really know if a multiplayer would actually be needed for the game. It would be nice to actually have one, but I don't think it's really essential. I'm not quite sure how they would actually balance the powers being used in the game because you probably just get everyone just probably doing I don't know time blast all over the place or or just running around really quickly so you couldn't actually do anything and slowing everybody down so I'm not quite sure how they would play uh, do a multiplayer game that's probably why they never released one in the first place but it would be quite good if they did I would look forward to that especially for her her does add an, uh, putting an add-on out so my overall thoughts for quantum break in a nutshell is basically three things uh, great gameplay good performance graphics could have been better or we could probably say poor graphics, but then again, when you sort of compare it to older games, it's obviously a lot better. But the problem is when you compare it to the games that are coming out today, uh, for the PC, uh, the graphics are, are, in, are in general very, very poor. They do perform okay. I reckon they perform a lot better if it wasn't within the Windows Store, uh, Windows 10 Store for the limitations that it has. But hopefully those will be ironed out later on in the future. Um, the gameplay itself, I couldn't have asked for anything better. To be honest, it was extremely good. I loved the game. I had to get off it at one point because I had to go do some stuff for the wife, but. 
Um, in the end, I will get I will get around to probably going getting my second playthrough because I think it's absolutely fantastic. I do really want to play the game again. So whack it on the hardest setting and see how far I can get. Um, Performance-wise, like I say, it's not too much of an issue really. If you are having issues, like I did say in the uh, previously, just lock it to 30 FPS or turn down some of the texture settings, and it should you should be able to get a good overall gaming experience. The graphics, though, I just wish they really were better. They, from the screenshots, they look like they're going to be super sharp, really crisp, just an, an amazing experience in it. I just didn't quite get that with the graphics. It was pretty poor in general, and I know the time effects in it were very good. They kind of help me sort of accept how bad the graphics were when they could have been a lot better but all in all yeah definitely a problem with the graphics there um so i suppose it's in the essence here would you would i recommend the game for you would i say to you to go and buy it for your pc for the pc i do struggle to say go and buy it because it is still quite expensive it's about 45 quid uh, for a game that doesn't quite really perform as well as i hope so just on that alone really i say no for the console though if you've got an xbox one definitely go out and purchase this game you won't be disappointed with it Anyway, other, other than that, so have those been my final thoughts on the game? What are your final thoughts on the game? Has it been a really good experience for you? Has it been a bit of a struggle? Can you still get the game working? Or has it been one of those games that for you it's been such a long time coming, but yet you do actually was disappointed with the final outcome? You know, whichever your thoughts are, post below. Let's get a, let's get a little discussion going on. And that brings us to the end of this video. So I hope you have liked the content. If you have any problems, questions or careers, then just leave a comment below or just post me a uh, message directly to this YouTube account. And of course, please don't forget to subscribe if you want to see some more of this content. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again.